Okay, I think we, we should probably start. Um, hopefully people will, will join us um, as we continue, but I don't want to leave it too longer and we, we would like to try and uh, keep within the, the hour if, if possible. So um, please let me begin by, by welcoming you all to, um, to the, the 12th webinar um, from the World Data System. We're really pleased that you could, uh, could join us today and we're delighted to have um, Dr. Dawei Lin um, to present. So Dawei Lin is the Associate Director for Bioinformatics uh, Division of Allergy, Immunology and Transplantation. Um, from the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases um, of uh, the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. Um, Dawe is uh, also a representative of a, a WDS uh, certified regular member, um, the Im Import um, Database, and um, he is this also... This conference will now be recorded. And um, Dawe is also a board member of the Core Trust Seal. Dawe has been very, very instrumental in uh, developing what we, we're calling the trust principles, which um, Dawe will, will introduce to you, to those of you who are less familiar with, uh, with the trust principles, and will also um, then focus on a, a recent... Um, uh, uh, workshop that took place uh, within the, the NIH, which brought together data repositories from the NIH, where they discussed the trust principles in kind of a more real setting. Um, before I let Dawe begin, uh, there are a couple of quick uh, sort of house rules. So Dawe will, will talk for about um, 40 minutes or so. Um, during that time, you are uh, we would like to encourage you to um, uh, be muted. However, if you really have a burning question, please do um, do stop that way. However, what we would prefer is for people to add any questions they have into the chat window, um, and then we will spend the last 10 to 15 minutes going through those questions one by one with Dawei. Um, this we found this is is the the nicest way to um, to sort of deal with a Q and A session at the end. So I hope that's fine for everyone. And uh, without further ado, Dawei, um, please go ahead and start. Okay, uh, it is a great pleasure to present at the. Uh the World Data System Seminar Series, and especially talking about the Trustworthy Data Repository, uh, which uh, is an uh, area I deeply care about. And, and thank you, Arari, for uh, organizing this uh, seminar and uh, providing uh, the opportunity. Uh, so I plan to uh, give a brief uh, introduction to Trust Principle, uh, and in more details a, um, uh, are in the white paper, which was first released at the, the Research Data Alliance uh, 13th plenary in uh, Philadelphia. And, uh, and then there was a new version uh, was released uh, last month, uh, right before uh, IPRESS 2019, which is a, uh, a major data preservation conference. And um, Barbara Seaman uh, uh, helped the group present it there, and it was uh, also very well received. Um, and uh, for uh, the the last uh, few months, uh, we receive uh, uh, more than 100 uh, comments and suggestions, and then we continue to receiving them. So um, uh, I definitely encourage you to uh, read the white paper and then uh, and let us know what your thoughts are and uh, and we will have a link to the white paper uh, uh, in the, one of the slides uh, that we're going to talk about and uh, and also I think the, the exciting part is that uh, for the principles uh, it will be uh, cool that that you have 
uh, a use cases of it. And uh, and then the uh, at the NH uh, workshop for trust data repositories uh, for biomedical sciences, uh, as uh, Rory mentioned, uh, the the trust framework uh, worked really well for us, and uh, and I will talk a little bit about what, that as well. And uh, hopefully, like the for the people who are working in the biomedical uh, domain, uh, can get something out of it. So I will just to uh, to set the stage, uh, and I think you all saw that um, on the uh, Economist cover that uh, the the data is a uh, a new oil, and uh, and the um, is is considered as as the most valuable uh, resources, and uh, and on the left, uh, that is a uh, a estimate for uh, biomedical data. And you can see that the genomic data that in um, uh, 2025 probably will be bigger than YouTube, Twitter, and uh, astronomy, astronomy data combined. Uh, so it's not just um, the there is data available, but also uh, the size of data is, is increasing. And uh, the so the data is only um, uh, maximize their value when the, they're shared, and um, and that uh, uh, that will eventually benefit uh, the individual researchers uh, and, uh, and the research community and the, the general uh, society. And so, um, so the the need of the sharing actually is promote. Uh, the um, the endorsement and the adoption for uh, fair principles, and uh, especially that uh, now uh, a lot of field they want a, a machine readable format, and um, and then they require uh, the uh, the data to be fair. Uh, the fair for uh, people have not uh, really. Um, I uh, heard about them is is the uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So that um, so the key thing and and people uh, really want to uh, focus on the fair is the reusable. Once is re uh, is is usable, then require uh, the features that that for data to have. Um, so the um, <clears throat> so that is where uh, I think the uh, where the trust coming in, and um, the the fair principle, although is very pervasive, everybody talk about it, but it's only about data, and nobody really thinking about fair when they um, when they think about how to make data fair. And also, like the fair data is not equivalent to high quality data, and is not saying that who can make data fair for the long term. So there is a lot of dimensions that um, to add values to the uh, the data ecosystem is not there, and uh, and that all uh, converges to the another uh, important ecosystem which is which is data repositories and then the uh, the slide shows that uh, the this has been very actively uh, discussed although um, uh, it is not active discussed uh, in the biomedical repositories uh, in the past two years and I, I actually is starting uh, there's a lot of uh, activity now starting to show up now. Um, so the the uh, the community discussion. Uh, the one example is that um, the national the the networking and information technology research and development. Uh, this is uh, NITRAD is a uh, interagency uh, uh, in the agency working group. Um, 
for the U.S. government, uh, and they invite uh, the experts in the different uh, field and from uh, the uh, representative of different stakeholders and talk about the data repositories. And there is one thing they identify in the workshop, uh, is, uh, which is highlighted in blue, is that the data repository certification uh, that is understandable and usable across a broad range of repositories. And those certifications is a, um, a need that uh, we want to make sure that uh, the repositories as a service provider to make data fair is need to be uh, uh, considered. So, um, <clears throat> so what if like we don't consider this? And this is actually what happened uh, that for uh, a 328 uh, biomedical databases, uh, which has been surveyed for the uh, for 18 years, and the um, the paper by Atwood at all at all in uh, 2015, and shows that the purple like uh, purple color of the pie, which is 62. 0.3% of them actually just died, like this fire from the internet. And there was a there was a 16.3%, which is the um, uh, uh, is the uh, still alive, and then the seven percent, uh, like the right part, is alive, uh, but is is kind of uh, uh, rebranding, meaning uh, that some of the databases is merged with other databases. And then there was another light uh, green one, like 14.4%, that is archived, meaning that although they're online, but the contents has not been updated for the last five years. So, um, so that you can see, like, if you add it up, and there would be like uh, more than 80% of the, uh, the repositories that um, the data may uh, made lost. Uh, in the way that cannot be recovered. And of course that uh, there is a natural uh, fatality, like the when technology uh, obsolete, that the, the data may go with it, but 80% um, of the, um, the database is not in the uh, stable stage. I think that's uh, is alarming. And, uh, and then the, uh, for NIH as, one of the the biggest uh, funding agency uh, uh, from from the U.S. and uh, and also kind of in the world, like we probably have um, uh, maybe found one third of the biomedical research uh, in the world. Um, that we sort of recognize this issue, and uh, and then uh, last year. Uh, that we release a, a strategic plan for uh, the entire NIH um, to recognize what are the key issues for, for data science. And, uh, and then the second column is the one that in the uh, NIH strategic plan that highlight that the importance of uh, data repositories. And the, um, the things we uh, want to do is really want to modernize the data repository ecosystem. Uh, that given the uh, the computer uh, technology advances, uh, internet, and the uh, the globalization. So that's the things that um, I think on our mind, and uh, that's where the highlight there. And so the uh, the uh, just reiterate the issues that. Uh, mentioned in the previous slide about the uh, the survey is that uh, for NIH um, the the repositories uh, that is mostly uh, using the research grant mechanism that which is prioritized for innovations and hypothesis testing and not on the user surveys or utility or access or the efficiency of the operation. 
so the um, so the uh, the yellow highlighted area is the area is now need more attention than um, than before. So uh, let's come to the um, the uh, the motivation that why we want to talk about this trustworthiness uh, and which is will lead the uh, the trust principle. Uh, the the trust principle, I, I think the um, the uh, one way we think about it is uh, is we need a uh, a consensus, consensus, and a measurable approach to uh, think about the trustworthy data repositories, and uh, like the the some something that is not only the expert of repository can talk about. You know, the founders, the policymakers, and maybe politicians they they can talk about the importance of the data repositories. So we need we need something catchy, and this is uh, uh, is is uh, is also learning from the fair, which is a uh, acronym for uh, desirable properties of data. So we need something that uh, is easy to say about a repository. So that's one of the main uh, driving force for developing trust principles, and the other is that. Um, is to uh, once you have uh, a clear message, what is the important, uh, why the repository is important, and that is can help to build up the community and and work together. And so, uh, one thing I want to point out, and this is like a frequent question when we um, uh, release this trust principle, uh, is that the trust. Uh, principle is not trying to replace existing standards or best practices, and there's a lot of uh, uh, out there. And instead, the trust is trying to let all these people work together to form a, a, uh, the same message and to communicate with each other and with the uh, the people who are uh, supporting that and, and use the uh, repositories. And so, uh, so to achieve that goal uh, is uh, basically we have to kind of extract the really the core concept of, um, of all the, uh, the existing standards and best practice and, and put into the, um, the, the consideration of the life cycle management and, uh, and then target for uh, data preservation. So just to uh, uh, frame the, uh, the scope of the things we're, we're talking about. And so the, uh, on the slide is the, uh, is the ecosystem that we can think about. And then the, uh, the people all uh, um, familiar with the open science, open data. And so that that's is, um, is the environment we want to have. And the, uh, the repositories are the enablers. That uh, to make sure that data objects are well preserved and uh, and then be fair uh, as user requests. And some data may not be fair because uh, just some legacy data is too expensive to make it fair. Um, but if if user wants and to be fair, then the repository have the responsibility to do that. And then um, the e ecosystem will also will. Uh, involve the community, like you know, if you use the data, you want to uh, cite it and give the credit to the data uh, providers. So uh, to summarize, is that uh, the, the trust principles really at the um, at the data repository level, and the fair principles is targeted at the data object level. And then here it is. Uh, this is the trust uh, principle uh, that um, the there was. Five letters, uh, and first is transparency. Uh, that um, and then the uh, the the R is responsibility, and the and U is user community, and S is sustainability, and T is technology. And I will briefly mention them in the following slides. 
So transparency uh, is really about to tell uh, the, your stakeholders what your, you um, what you do or you cannot do, uh, and, uh, and then uh, put it into the the documentation and public accessible, so they they know uh, what exactly they are expecting. And uh, and the responsibility is that that you have to fulfill your commitment. Like if if this is services you uh, you promise to provide, and you will do it. And uh, and then uh, the user community is uh, also happen in the center of the uh, the world. The word trust is is that the all this. Uh, ecosystem really about the users and uh, the the users who can benefit from this data and the users can leverage the value of the data and do something that uh, nobody can think of uh, that before and the sustainability is the um, is the uh, the time dimension that uh, that you not only want that property like fair or open, but you also want them long term, and, uh, and then you can uh, long term uh, is also means maybe that you have to do the planning for uh, people may use the data but they have not born yet. So that's the the, the mindset that now uh, you preserve the value of, of data. And technology is uh, is pretty straightforward. Is that it, it needs some infrastructure and, and, and capabilities that to support your operations. So, um, so the, uh, the key advantage of uh, trust, as, as I mentioned, uh, some in the motivation part of it is that uh, the, the trust is trying to uh, offer a common framework for, um, for evaluate the repositories. And uh, this is especially for uh, important for NIH because we found uh, hundreds and, um, and maybe thousands of data repositories, and they're in different stages. Uh, stages. Some is like young repositories because the technology is so very new, and some are mature repositories, and then some may be sense settings. And so we need a framework uh, to. Uh, Think about all these repositories, and the trust principle gave that guidance. And uh, uh, the uh, the guidance actually uh, for the trustworthy repository is already there, like uh, Oasis, that um, that I mentioned in the second bullet is, is a golden standard uh, for the trustworthy data repositories. Uh, I think the issue for that is just it it is targeted for experts. Uh, is uh, is not for the message for the whole society, and so the the trust principle hopefully that to bridge that gap, the the communication gap. And then as the uh, we point out in the early slides that uh, the um, the trust principle actually is hand in hand with the fair principle, uh, and and the data citation principle. So they're just at the different. Uh, address different part of the uh, ecosystem, and uh, and then I think the uh, based uh, based on like later on we'll talk about the, uh, the workshop. I think is really for easy for people to follow. So um, so the uh, the the trust principle uh, white paper is out there. I think it would lay out the uh, the basic concept, uh, which is kind of briefly touched on uh, uh, in the previous slides, but, but I think we still need some work to do in order to make uh, the trust principle more actionable. Uh, some of them will definitely need uh, some help from the community. That is, like, how do we map the uh, trust principles to different standards, like uh, the ISO standard, uh, the Caltra seal, and uh, DING, uh, you know, and, and there is a couple of other uh, criteria to evaluate the trustworthy data repositories, and those uh, are all need uh, a mapping that to to really kind of uh, distill 
the core concept of them. Um, that's uh, things we uh, need to do uh, for the next phase of the white paper. And after that, probably we can develop some um, the principles that, that people can use uh, as uh, practical guidance. So, um, so that's the concept of trust principle. And, uh, and then uh, we uh, actually use that for the workshop is not planned. Uh, is uh, we uh, we meaning that in age like we have a workshop on trustworthy data repositories, uh, which uh, we plan to use the Kafka Seal um, framework. Uh, it turned out even the Kafka Seal as the most simplest uh, the standard out there, uh, which have sixteen requirements. And it's still very difficult for people to grasp the concept, especially for people who have not been thinking about um, the how to preserve knowledge, data, and how to make uh, the data management uh, in an organized way. And so, um, so the um, after the first round of discussion, we think that we should. Uh, try the, the trust principle framework, which is released like a week ago before the NIH workshop. And it's turned out to be uh, a really helpful uh, because the, uh, the trust uh, framework is very close like aligned with the goal we want to have a workshop. Because we, we uh, as uh, I, I mentioned before, that the, uh, the the operation and service part of the data repository has been a uh, a weak uh, point for for NIH, uh, um, the uh, the repository management, and so we want to see if the uh, the operation is is trustworthy, and then understand what um, what are the principles for. Uh, uh, the, the biomedical data repositories, and uh, and then also that uh, to think about this um, the certification approach uh, that the third party uh, peer reviewed, for example, uh, that how that are going to be uh, 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 applicable to the NIH uh, environment, and uh, uh, the so uh, the uh, workshop is is. Uh, basically uh, introduce the concept uh, because a lot of uh, biomedical scientists have not really thinking about data repositories as an operation uh, or in a way that um, is not think about as a, a professional ways of running repositories, more like a research uh, uh, project. And, uh, and then uh, then we have some examples uh, uh, from the existing data repository has been certified and share their experience, their lesson learned. And, uh, and then uh, the workshop talked about different certifications. So that's sort of the way that uh, maybe can link the different, uh, different ways to think about the, the, the trust principles. And then the, uh, the challenges and how uh, community work together. So uh, there was a three questions that we ask. Uh, I was just going to paraphrase that. Basically, is that uh, uh, are there existing standards that are ap applicable for uh, biomedical repositories, and uh, are those uh, requirements out there are um, not applicable? Uh, maybe you know, for some other sciences, but but not for biomedical sciences. And then there was anything missing. So that's kind of the three areas that we want uh, the meeting participant to talk about. Um, so the, uh, this is the, uh, the representation of the workshop. And uh, so we invite uh, that 20, about 20 uh, biomedical data repositories and the operators, and uh, then the, our, um, the program officers uh, let them come, and then you can see that they represent uh, pretty nicely. Um, 
and the in terms uh, of familiarity of the concept of uh, trustworthy and uh, and then repository certification uh, you can see there is uh, it's pretty evenly distributed there's some people are familiar with it uh, because there is some repository has already got a certification and some people have not heard about it um, so it's a it's a very good mix of group to to talk about uh, some new uh, concept and this slide is is really uh, interesting is that um, is uh, so this is the before we define the trust repository or tell them what the trust principles are and we let the participant to give three keywords to, uh, about what they think about the importance of data repositories and uh, once they submit through the uh, kind of a long online uh, real-time survey form and you can see that the very uh, middle is transparency is the first letter of the trust and then um, and then there is a, uh, a the um, there is technology and uh, and then there is data uh, there is system sustainability like their preservation out there and there is no responsibility uh, however that um, the um, there is a different type of uh, area of responsibility that are all, uh, uh, on the slide like the stewardship you know the quality you know uh, all that I think the the responsibility is kind of like the hard to define which I will touch uh, a little bit later and so um, so after they have uh, a discussion about what the importance of the uh, data repositories, and we just follow their natural thought about what people think about the importance uh, or critical component of their repository. And, um, and then uh, we show them like the, um, their trust principles that, you know, what is the transparent, transparency? And, uh, and people will talk about what they think about the transparency, uh, transparency. and then uh, they gave the uh, again the keyword uh, for that uh, for this particular aspect of trust principles, and then uh, on the uh, at the bottom that the three uh, bullet points are the ones the biomedical audience are thinking about what is the most important thing in the transparency so like data provenance and data curation and documentation of process and policies and the similar process uh, that uh, run for uh, responsibilities and um, the responsibilities uh, it was unexpectedly uh, complicated uh, we did not expect that um, but the uh, but it's interesting to see the discussion where the discussion is going. So the responsibility basically nobody liked to take responsibilities, <laughs> and um, and then the uh, they need uh, define like what who is responsible for what uh, like the so the first play the point that it has to be very clear defined the stakeholders and then they will take their responsibilities. And, uh, and also the, uh, the data quality and uh, uh, education, communication, and stewardship. And, and you can see that like, this is really towards a, a running a good operation. And, uh, and then uh, since nobody likes to take a responsibility, and in order for the, uh, the repository to run, uh, you need to build that culture that is not just push things to other people. Uh, people need to work together. Um, and then the, uh, this, uh, the user community, uh, we thought that would be uh, uh, diverse, a, a diverse uh, discussion, but it's turned out that people agree pretty well. Basically, I think it is the, the user-centric. Uh, you need to focus on the core user group uh, and some, uh, some 
people call it designated community. And that is the, uh, the cohort you need to, uh, to serve while. Uh, and then sustainability is that um, this always confuse uh, our uh, involved with the funding uh, and and the uh, I think that is very reasonable uh, but um, but I think the uh, based on the other scientific domain like the library science and the space science that uh, the preservation do not have to have uh, perpetual funding uh, you need to think about the preservation plans like uh, in the sense that when the funding is not there, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, this is the, uh, the a very frequent, um, frequent uh, the, uh, the discuss uh, points for, uh, for repository to be certified. That, uh, and, and also it's the most learning area when people go through the certification process. Because a lot of people have not thought about that when their funding is ended, uh, what they're going to do. Uh, it's not meant to be like cut people's funding, but it's, it's a useful exercise for them to think about uh, they, um, the, they preserve the, uh, the data for the long term. And technology uh, is, um, is often the least discussion uh, discussed area. And uh, because it's kind of related to the, uh, the fundamental IT, and then I think uh, as you can see uh, on the slide, is, is, is basically just have enough computing power and, and everybody understand that. And so then um, uh, to summarize what, uh, what I just, uh, uh, what I just, Said, I think from the um, uh, the discussion, there's uh, there is a lot of uh, excitement about uh, using like follow the principles, and uh, if you follow the principle, there is already a certification uh, standard out there that can use that, and how to use that uh, into the biomedical repositories, and uh, and in the uh, uh, biomedical repositories, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, clinical data that, uh, which is not in the uh, current uh, certification, uh, repository certification standard, but it's kind of specific to biomedical domains. Uh, those need to be considered. Uh, those, the license for those reposit, for those data need to be uh, uh, considered uh, as well. And then, um, and then there is, uh, there is, uh, so that's kind of basically re referred to the clinical trials, clinical data, and the human data. And, uh, and then there is, uh, the, the, the basic discussion I think is that, um, is the trust principle is uh, applicable to the data repositories. And, uh, and then after, uh, a, a day and a half workshop, and then uh, we ask people who will consider uh, to go through the certification process. And actually there is quite a few that um, they decided this is something is good for their, um, for their uh, repository. And there is a, um, there was a five like in, you know, immediately want to do something, uh, and uh, and we did kind of receive some um, application to uh, Culture Seal, uh, and uh, like which kind of followed the workshop. Uh, so we're uh, very encouraged by the results, like that how people consider that the operation uh, is an important part of of their program. So. Uh, so this is the outcome and um, uh, for the workshop. And then there is, uh, as I mentioned, there was people that uh, after learning uh, the, uh, the certification, and I think there is, is that process we're going to uh, help, them, help them improve their trustworthiness. 
and uh, and also the um, the um, the people that want to learn more about it. And I said, I think the for the the twenty data repositories are some are in uh, in different stages. Uh, stages of their operation and then they want to know uh, what they uh, they would like to um, and they want to engage with discussion to see how the development is going on and uh, and then they uh, they ask to to, um, to have a, to set up a meeting list so they can continue to uh, talk to each other and we have one is on the uh, uh, on the slide that uh, that link that you can uh, free join that um, and then um, uh, the um, the, uh, the some of them are kind of interesting uh, to contribute to the, uh, the white paper that that we put out there uh, after the workshop so so that's uh, what I'm going to uh, talk about um, and then this is a, a couple of links, and I think Rory probably will uh, distribute slides somehow to to the list, and, uh, and then you can uh, click the link that for the uh, the final report that we put out about the workshop, uh, just to give more details of what I, I just talked about, and um, and also this is the the people who are involved in organizing the workshop. And I also want to uh, thanks, uh, thank the, the co-authors for the, uh, the latest version of Trust uh, Principal White Paper. Uh, we have a, a really uh, representative group, you know, from librarians to data scientists to publishers to data preservationists, archivists, uh, and so, um, so we're very excited that um, that uh, we sort of the, uh, put some the basic idea there, uh, and we are very eager to hear the feedbacks from the community and and, and welcome you to join our, our effort. So with that, uh, I want to stop and see if there's um, any questions. Okay, so let me uh, thank first thank uh, Dawe. Thank you for that very interesting talk. Um, I think it's kind of um, heartening um, to see that the the trust principles are resonating with a community that um, that is now beginning to change its mindset um, and. Um, sort of move towards the idea of certification and and, um, and uh, trustworthiness. So, um, the the health sciences and the biomedical sciences aren't aren't very well represented as regards being certified uh, or WDS members. Um, so I think um, this framework is obviously something that's re that's uh, that that's resonating with them and that, and that we hope will. Um, move move things forward um and beyond that i think it's uh, the trust principles are something that we're hoping the the whole of the community can engage with and endorse uh you were sent a copy of the 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 current paper so please do look at it please do comment on it uh, i will add the link to the the website as well where i will also make sure the wds website where i'll also make sure that the slides and this recording are added um so we've got about 10 minutes remaining um looking in the chat i can't see any um immediate questions that were were raised during the the talk but does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask Dawe now remembering that everybody's muted <laughs> so please unmute nothing um, okay, so well, um, whilst we let people have a quick think, let me just also mention that um, this is a companion uh, 
webinar to one that was given to the certification interest group of the Research Data Alliance, um, where we actually introduced the trust principles for the first time and 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 a lot of people who have since um, contributed to the paper were, were uh, either in that talk or connected with it. Um, the, the webinar that we that Dawe gave really focused more on the, the kind of fundamentals of, of the trust principles themselves. Um, and I will also make sure that the link to, to that, uh, to the slides and webinar from uh, uh, the slides and the recording of that webinar are are available um, to you all. So especially to the people who who um, unfortunately join late, please please don't worry. We we will make sure that everything is available on the WDS website for you to um, to access. I think the the things I want to add is also that um, the uh, the trust principle will. Uh, will be discussed again at the RDA 15 in uh, Helsinki, Finland. Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, so one final chance, I think, to ask any questions. Um, but please be aware as well that that. Uh, Dawei's contact information, and obviously the you, uh, you have already the contact information of the the um, International Program Office of the World Data System. So if you do have any questions at any point, please do feel free to either e email Dawei directly or myself, and we'll be um, more than happy to uh, to answer any any questions you have about not only the trust principles but the certification more generally if your um, if your data repository is interested in becoming um, certified then um, then please do let us know and we can uh, we can give you a lot of information and point you in the right direction so any final thoughts that way um, otherwise I think we should um, we should close and, and let everybody uh, get on with their day yeah, I, I think I just want to uh, thank everybody uh, to take time uh, to attend the, the webinar and um, and we uh, again is very open and so this trust principle is uh, the principle for the community. So uh, we uh, we hope you can join us to the effort and um, and provide your comments and uh, and then. Uh, later on that to hopefully the, the trust principle can help build up a, a, a strong and um, the, the data ecosystem. Yes, yeah, I have to agree with that. I mean, the, this is only going to gain traction if the community gets behind it and we want the community to comment as much as possible so that they feel they can get behind it and endorse it. So again, please please do have a look um, if you're interested, and please do um, make comments. And and if you're really interested in becoming one of the authors, then then let us know as well, because we'll be very happy to have you involved. So um, I think we'll we'll leave it there. Thank you so much again, everybody, for joining us today, and thank you very much again, Dawe, for for your presentation. Um, and uh, we'll. Uh, look forward to uh, to continuing the WDS webinar series very soon. We'll we'll keep in contact with with you to um, to announce uh, the next webinar um, once we have it uh, finalised. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. Okay.